it was a bit bit weird because um, you sort of wanted it for so long and then injuries and stuff and like live moving on sort of like was back of mind um, so it was a bit bit of a shock initially and then just yeah excitement nerves anxiety all the all, all the different emotions that come with anything um, all, all sort of amalgamated with one um, and, and finding out a fair way out from pre-season means that you've got plenty of time to mull it over. Yeah, but I reckon I'd come to that conclusion a few years ago um, and then just playing Premier Cricket and like needing to be at a high standard, you continue working on your game and, and training hard enough just for those reasons. Um, and then I think as the season wore on, there was like people always whispering and stuff and you just sort of tell yourself the opposite because you don't want to think about it too much. Um, I think the more you think about it, the worse you go. So yeah, I think giving up was probably a stretch because I don't think you ever give up, but yeah, definitely uh, on the back burner. Definitely strength conditioning work um, would be key, obviously just doing my own sort of thing um, off the basis of like stuff when I was younger. So it'd be good to get, especially from a running base, uh, conditioning, conditioning wise to work under Moddy um, will be really exciting. And then to learn maybe more about uh, less sort of technical sides of bowling, because when you're almost 30, you sort of, you are what you are. Um, but definitely learning more from all players, not just the coaches, obviously, you know, despite their ages, there's guys in this, this um, squad that have played a lot more first class cricket than me, because I've played zero. <laughs> um, so to, to learn off them is just sort of the way they approach the game mentally, um, not only tactics wise, but just preparation. I don't know what I can offer those guys in terms of like, they're, they're going to have more experience at that level, but it might be more experience in terms of handling ups and downs. Like when you're 21, 22, like if you're playing, if you've played 10 shield games, things have probably always been pretty good. Um, I can't speak for any of them, but they might not have, you know, had, had the down periods that I might have had in, ter in terms of on the cricket field and then off the cricket field, because, you know, having that lived experience, having been in the workforce for um, almost eight or, eight or so years, um, that might be able to help in terms of perspective. Um, and then those guys you mentioned, obviously, Siddle, Pete, uh, Pete, I don't know, I don't know him well enough to call him. I don't know what's called. Him. <laughs> but, you know, he's, he'll come in with, again, a different perspective. He's been there, he's done that, and obviously wants to, I'm assuming, progress into like a more of a leadership coaching perspective. So I think that's the thing, like everyone can lean on everyone in different frames. So I might not be able to help anyone with their outswinger, but I might be able to help them with handling adversity um, off the field or even on it. Knowledge of like how to stay um, at the level for so long, like both of them, or both of them in, well into their 30s, Sid's is closing in on 40. You probably won't like me mentioning that. Um, but learning from them, like how do you maintain, you know, both of them in terms of ball speed haven't really dropped off. In, in fact, I reckon Sid's has come back up again. Um, so learning how they've been able to maintain that level um, so that, you know, they're getting every, you know, inch out of themselves. I mean, in years gone by, years gone by, no one would be Sid's age and still be bowling the way he does almost all year round. So um, to learn from him that, and then from Scotty to, to learn how he just has processes that he just doesn't miss. Um, that's something everyone's trying to do, but he doesn't really have that carbon copy action that you're probably taught from a youngster. So how he's made his body and his action work to still be um, who he is. When you're 19 and, and you're playing in all those Aussie 19 things um, with some guys who have gone on to play for Australia or most of those guys have played first class cricket, you, at that age you just sort of Things can be linear. Uh, you think it's just going to carry on, you know, uh, everything, you know, year after year, everything will just get better. Um, so my journey sort of took me a couple of years to sort of realise it wasn't just going to happen. Uh, I was able to spend some time playing in the UK, um, which didn't help my fitness, but definitely helped like my uh, approach to the game and, and understanding of what I wanted to get out of it. And then after that, it was just sort of Premier Cricket and just trying to play to my strengths as much as I could and, and work on them and, and bring my game up to scratch. Um, and and just enjoy playing with my mates and, and, and playing for my career because it's such a, a high standard competition um, and to be able to work on yourself in that environment and also live your life outside of that in terms of getting a job and, and moving on in that facet. Yeah, it sort of made me probably a more well-rounded person um, and yeah, it's led me, led me here. So I wouldn't change a thing, the fact that you know, I've had people that I did play those 19s with, you know, I've mentioned the guys that have gone on to play first class cricket, but there's a number who don't play cricket at all. Um, anymore. So, you know, for me to be able to have experience in the workforce and, and have somewhere to fall back on um, is something I'm pretty grateful for. Yeah, that was interesting, just going like and playing for a Glenorchy, um, which was, I would say, the, the equivalent of Ringwood in that competition, you know, a bit of the, the Bogan um, area of, of Hobart. Um, it was it was different, like the resources, like we're, we probably take for granted in Victorian cricket, like how much, even at club land, like how many coaches we have at each club. You know, Glenorchy was a lot more under-resourced in terms of there was probably 
one coach, a lot of helpers, but one coach in terms that can really help work on your skills who also had to manage so many people. Um, so that helped me there in terms of like helping other people and probably trying to take stuff that I'm given and, and do it without their supervision or guise. Um, but then from in terms of playing, you play against clubs more frequently, so you can actually work on playing specific batters. I think in Premier Cricket, here you play a team once a year, maybe twice if you make finals. And more often than not, the game plan's pretty much the same. You know, there might be one person that's got an obvious flaw that you've played enough that you know. Whereas in Tasmanian cricket, you can play a guy if you make the grand final five or six times in a year. So by then, you know, you can actually work on plans. So it probably helped the way you thought about the game a bit more um, going in. And there was a bit more sort of one-on-one -on -one rivalries. Whereas I think in Victorian Premier Cricket, it's just sort of like each game, you come with a plan A and it's whoever does it better wins. Going in was, was pretty good. It was just like congratulations, having like sort of played it before, gone away and come back. Um, and then afterwards just getting, you know, a bit of feedback in terms of what you're doing well, what you can do to, to go to the next level. Um, and then also sometimes just little things on what they think um, could help, but not sort of their way or the highway. Just a, just a suggestion because I think there's the understanding that everyone knows, especially someone who's not in the system, um, everyone knows their way best, their methods. So, and also the fact that you get to work with different coaches. So we work with um, Clint McKay, um, and Tommy Evans the first time round, and then the second time round it was um, Craig Howard, um, and I think it was um, Phil Ann Samarua. So, you know, not that the batting guys gave me much, but, um, but to, to work with different viewpoints on the game and guys that might have different suggestions um, was, was really good. Now, open to, to chat about anything, which was, which was also refreshing. Probably this time round, um, knowing, knowing myself better, not as, as big. Um, the first time round, it was a bit more overawing having only played Premier Cricket and getting away with stuff. Um, so you sort of learnt after that first bout of second limb cricket a few years back, trying to take that stand into Premier Cricket. So, so this time the, the step up, probably like it's still bigger, but it's probably not quite as overawing. Um, but it's, it's a hard one to sort of, to work against um, because it's, it's different environment, you know, on a Saturday when you turn up with all your mates, you're a bit more relaxed straight away. Um, and when you're someone coming out, you know, the, each time there's probably four or five of us that weren't a part of that team environment week, day in, day out. It can, you sort of take half the day to, to settle yourself down. Um, so I think that's the way you learn. But every time you go up, it's not, it's not actually about the skill set per se in terms of like pure talent. It's more about just that consistency and ability to, to keep doing it. So that mental and physical stuff that we spoke about earlier. Oh, it depends on your person. I'm, the, I'm a pretty... Uh, uh, I would say overthinker and nervous guy, so I'll probably like undervalue that uh, heaps more than other people might value it. But definitely like, um, just like the the reward for effort, you sort of to sort of realise you can can do it and can perform consistently. Um, so um, that that was a big one, and and being able to take uh, wickets every single game and and understanding, you know what what you have to do to do that. Um, so in terms of going to state, like, like I said, it's a new environment for me, so it'll take me a couple of weeks around the group to sort of relax um, and then it'll just be about working with the coaching staff and so on and understand what parts of that Premier Cricket, whether it's just rinse and repeat and try to do it bigger and better um, or if there are little tweaks we can add. But confidence wise, yeah, that, that you're not just another, you know, without being disparaging, just not, not just another Premier Cricketer, you are slightly a step above. <laughs> I'd like to think a fair bit, um, again, like I said, in terms of like talent that you, you've got what you've got, but in terms of fitness, in terms of strength, um, and it might be little extra things that you get from working with conditioning staff, you know, four to five days a week or with a bowling coach. And it, I think often there's, by the time you get to this level, it's rarely, especially at my age, it's rarely like a major thing. Like it, it, it might be, you know, you, you move your left toe in three centimetres or, you know, you work on your sprint technique enough and it might give you an extra X factor or extra ability to, to do things for longer that you can't unlock when you work a nine to five behind a desk or, you know, landscaping or whatever. Um, people may be. I'm not a landscaper, so I was wondering. Um, but yeah, I think that might be the thing rather than, you know, when if you're 20, 21, there's obviously so many things. Um, and I'm sure the guys that are younger are working on massive things. Um, at my age, it's, it's not going to be a big technical push. It might just be that little bit of extra knowledge or endurance that needs to push over the edge. Yeah, definitely. I think, I think they, they, they always have a little bit, but it's in terms of like, um, timing, like the, you've got to time your run. You know, if you know, if I'd had my this season that I've had, or, or both the times that had their seasons, they'd had five years ago when Victoria had a a, a group that was all probably 25 or over and mature and were just running like a well-oiled machine. 
they might not have they might not have happened. So there is a little bit of that timing into it. So I think Premier Cricket has always been there. It's just whether there's that opportunity. Um, but but also Premier like and, you could, and again without sounding arrogant, you got, you do have to dominate. And both the Toms have done that. You know every season like Tom Rogers has scored almost 2,000 runs in three years, and Tom O'Donnell has been one of the best left arm quicks as well. So that point of difference for a long time as well. So and James Seymour previously and, and so on. So Premier Cricket has always been there. It's just about like being patient and not thinking it'll just be one game or one month, that it is a body of work um, that needs to be put forward. I try to keep it internal. Like you, you, your brain's always gonna flutter off and, and think of what ifs and or wouldn't that be cool. Um, but I think you just gotta take it each day as it comes. Um, you know, like I said, every day you come into the City Power Centre trying to, trying to, if it is, get that little bit stronger, get that little bit quicker, be that little bit more consistent, you know, or, you know, or work on a process mentally or whatever it is. If you can just take those strides, small strides each and every day, you, you don't know where it'll take you. I think when I started pre-season last year at Ringwood, there was, I just wanted to, you know, come back from injury and, and bowl well. So, you know, you don't think about trying to take X amount of wickets or be in this team or that team. So I think trying to stay in the moment as much as possible is key. Um, but obviously it'd be great to be part of. It's like, it'd be dumb not to say that, but you know, they have this made back-to-back -back Shield finals and. Pace bowling's been one of the, the main things that's been going well for them. So um, there's plenty of competition, which is good. It'll be healthy and I can't wait to get stuck into it and, and without being very footy, get around them. <laughs> I think obviously Scotty's been that hit the wicket bowler for so long, but now that he's well-deservedly gone on higher honours, there has probably been a lack of, or not a lack of, but definitely like someone who can just run in for long periods and bowl relatively quick into the pitch. Um, and it might be a bit of donkey work on some days, but. That's something I've always been able to do, bowl long spells um, and just sort of just enjoy running in and just bowling as hard as you can into the pitch. Um, a lot of the guys like Ferg and, and Mitch, um, who definitely have pace within them, but are definitely more sort of pitch it up and swing it around types with a bit more sort of fancy tricks than myself. So it's probably that role where a lot of the younger guys yeah, have probably got more um, tricks to their or strings to their bow, um, but you know, someone that can just sort of be plugged in and and just run in for an hour straight and, and give it their all. That might be my role.